Hey, Roger Casey again with Burgess. I want to talk today about uh, roof ventilation and minimum vent area. So this uh, in the IRC is R806 is roof ventilation and R806.2 is minimum vent area. And there was a uh, two things to address today. One, a big change in the 2018 IRC over the 15, uh, but also how we can help ourselves and do a better job even if we're still building under the 2015 or 12, for that matter, IRC. So the change, let's jump to that in the 2018 IRC, it did away with an either or bit of language for the exception. Here's the way ventilation reads for attics, that you'll need to provide one square foot of that ventilation for every 150 square feet of attic floor space. Okay, keep in mind that's attic floor space, that's not conditioned area of the home. So that does include porches, patios, etc. Attic floor space. The exception uh, allowed that to be really cut in half essentially. You could use the ratio of one square foot for every 300 square feet uh, of attic floor space if one of two conditions were met. Either installing a vapor retarder at the ceiling in climate zones six through eight, or splitting the required amount of ventilation between upper vents and lower vents. That language changed in the 2018. It's not an either or now, it's an and. So now the one per 300 rule only applies essentially in climate zones six through eight because you cannot meet both requirements in climate zones one through five. We're not gonna install vapor retarders. But the fact that vapor retarders are mentioned should give us an idea of what we're going after, what we're accomplishing by doing this. There's a misconception that this is about heat in the attic and superheating the attic and ventilation kind of dissipates that heat. That's a byproduct in some instances, but that's not the driving factor here. And the vapor retarder lends itself as to the reason why. The average family of four produces about 25 pounds of water a day uh, that is transmitted through the ceiling into the attic space. So that's just from breathing, perspiration, bathing, cooking, showering, laundry, etc. That's a large volume of water every day. If water weighs a little over eight pounds per gallon, uh, it's almost three gallons, a little over three gallons of water every day that we're pushing up into the attic space. All right, so that's really the driving factor for appropriate and adequate attic ventilation. So remember that, that now we basically have to double the amount of uh, attic ventilation for the 2018. Um, and one other change that I'll touch on real quick that also happened in the 18 is dealing with lower vents for this ventilation scenario. No longer do they, are they specified to be in the soffit, just in the lower one third of the roof line. So that does help in some instances with proximity to adjacent lots, uh, fire code, etc., or more importantly and more commonly, if you're dealing with a, a lot of gables on a roof line as opposed to a hip roof, there are a lot less flat areas for soffit venting if you're dealing with uh, a gable roof line. So we also want to talk about a couple of products and net free area and what that looks like because that's very important. I think it's where perhaps we're getting tripped up a little bit. This is one product that's on the market, commonly used. It is 12 inches by 12 inches as it sits on the roof. So sometimes we look at that and think that's one square foot or 144 square inches of ventilation. But it's not because of all the obstructions. The way it's constructed, the way it's designed, and every manufacturer, every product has their own net free area specification. We have to watch that very carefully. So instead of 144 on this product, this is rated at 50 square inches of net free area. That's gonna be very important. So I wanna show you a quick, easy way to, uh, to do the math on ventilation, whether you're working off a set of plans or off of a um, partially or fully constructed home and make sure we get this right. Let me grab a couple of things and including some measurements and I'm gonna dive into that. Be right back. Okay, I grabbed a piece of scrap lumber and ran through the numbers so I can show you the math real quick. This is a large house that we're in. This is 6,500 square feet. Because of when and how it was permitted in the climate zone, uh, we can apply the one per 300 square foot rule. So that's the map we'll look at here. The one per 300 rule. So 6,500 square foot house. First you take and divide by 300 because that's what we're utilizing there. 
gives us 22 square feet total ventilation divided by two to get the upper and lower. We need 11 square feet in the upper and in the lower, 11 of each of those, times the 144, because that's how many square inches there are in a square foot, gives us 1,584. Remember, that's the number that we need in the lower and in the upper. So you can walk through the math this way, or you can take a shortcut. Remember that 1584. Just look at this left side for a minute, because this will be the 300 rule that we're applying right now. We simply take the 6,500 divided by 4, we get 1625. That's very close to that 1580 number that we were talking about a minute ago. Excuse me, let's get it right, 1584. All right, so it's a little over, barely, but that's okay. More ventilation is not a bad thing. If we were under the uh, 1 square foot per 150 square foot rule, basically doubled. So. 6,500 divided by 2 instead of 4, 3,250. Remember, that's the number that we need in the lower and in the upper. So let's take a look at the, what they have installed on this house and see how they came out. Okay, on this particular house, they've got 354 linear feet of perforated soffit. The particular uh, cementitious soffit they've got has a net free area of 5 inches per linear foot. That gives them 1,770 uh, square inches of opening for their lower ventilation. Remember, the number we're shooting for is 1584. That's the minimum. So they're at 1770. They're good on the lower. On the upper vents, they've got 11 vents installed at 50 square inches net free area each. That's 550 square inches of ventilation in the upper area of the attic. We're looking for 1,584. 550 is a little bit short. So under the guidelines of the 2015 IRC, using the current product they have installed in the upper ventilation, they would need 32 of those instead of 11 or 11 round, the, the round air hawk type uh, have a net free area of 150 square inches. So I hope all this helps. Simplified math, remember just take your square footage divided by 4 for the, uh, the 2015 IRC, take the square footage divided by 2 for the 2018 IRC in climate zones 1 through 5, um, and Make sure you utilize all the space you can, including the lower third of the roof line, now that that's available. I hope this helps. Another tip from Burgess. Thanks for watching.